Welcome back to the second part of our new program on our channel called How to Build a Windows Server 2012 R2 the Proper Way. Today, we were, last, week, uh, last time we showed you guys how uh, the hardware that we're going to be building it on it and what it looks like inside the closet. And we also talked about why we're not going to be doing a documentation episode until the last episode. So let's take a look at how to install Windows Server 2012 R2 uh, inside a virtual machine. Uh, we're going to be using a virtual machine, but this is the same thing for using a normal computer. What's up, YouTube? Okay, now we're going to show you guys how to install a server on a virtual machine. Now, you can do this on a normal computer. Um, I'm going to pretend that you guys already know how to uh, partition a computer and... and Get it all ready and you know install a hard drive and put it in the right boot order and do that kind of stuff uh, this is just how to install the os so let's take a look uh, we're going to bring up our rd man and uh, as you can see here i've got it all ready to go i have had lots of trouble uh, getting this going uh, just with uh, certain settings on the server so this is going to load up off of a off of, an, off of a flash drive uh, so it should be a lot quicker than off a disk, but I, regardless, I'm going to make sure I cut it to make it quick as possible. Uh, George uh, Shruthen had asked me, one of my buddies who does, uh, he does his own uh, little tech group called Just for Fun, but it's just, it's spelled J-U-Z. Anyway, um, he uh, he asked me to do the video. I'm going to probably put his, uh, his um, username up here uh, for you guys to have a look. But uh, let's have a look at what's going on here. We're going to go view full screen. We don't actually get to see real full screen because we're using the console and we don't have integration services installed. But uh, this video isn't about Hyper-V. So we're going to have a look and we're going to put it to English Canada. We can keep uh, the language to install English United States. Always do that anyway for keyboards. And we'll keep the keyboard layout to US. Otherwise, you'll get that silly French keyboard. Of course, you can repair from this ISO. One of the things that's also nice about a Windows Server ISO is you actually can get multiple versions that you can install. Uh, you can install Data Center, you can install Server Core with it. And what's nice now with Server 2012 is the fact that you can go from GUI back to Server Core um, with a single command, or you can actually still do it from the GUI, and you can put it all the way back up to a full GUI again. When you actually remove the GUI components, you can even delete them from the Win uh, SX, Win SXS, which stands for Windows Side-by-Side -side Directory. So right now we're going to go server core with GUI. We're going to do standard evaluation. We could do data center. I guess it, it wouldn't really matter. Data center gives us unlimited number of uh, VMs. Now what's interesting about the license here too is you get two uh, VM licenses with standard, but that also means that you can install with the same key as the host, the server, uh, you can install the same key as the host into the two VMs for server uh, 2012 R2 standard as well. So that's pretty cool. Uh, so let's go ahead and pick a uh, server with a GUI for the purpose of this video. And I like this too because you can you can give a server to somebody and get them to actually set it up as a full GUI and then at any time later go back and 100%, um, I don't know if you can hear the server in the back, it's quite loud, but 100% take it down to a server core. So if somebody doesn't understand the commands, it's fine. They can make a really fast and light server with Windows Server. That's something you couldn't do before. So we're going to go into a custom install always, and we're never, we're never ever going to click, click next, even though it does work. And I think nowadays it actually does create the second partition, but we always want to make sure it does create that second partition. And you don't ever want to question anything in the server. You want it to be perfect. So right now, we've, so we're going to make sure we select the bigger partition out of the two, and we're going to go next. And that's going to take time installing. Now, the first the first step, uh, copying Windows files, that takes no time at all. It's the second step, guys, getting files ready for installation, just like Windows 7 or Windows 8 installation that takes the longest. So I'm going to take it back to 50% uh, 50 so I'm going to leave it for here for now. Um, we'll come right back in a minute. So here we are back. Um, let's take a look. We're at 54%. It's been about a couple minutes. Normally on a disk it will take longer. Um, but uh, let's have a look when we're done installing. We pretty much just have to wait it out. After it's done 100%, this is the time that takes the longest. Um, it shouldn't take too much longer. We'll be booted up. And uh, yeah, the video will pretty much be done at that point. So stay tuned. Here we are back, and it's rebooting. Just like Windows 7 or Windows 8 installer, nothing special here. And you can see the Hyper-V logo comes up. 
And you can see at the top, we're remoted into two different servers. So I'm remoted into that big loud server you can hear. And then we're using the connect feature to connect to the Hyper-V DM. So right now it's going to load up, just like a Windows 8 or 8.1 installer. In the next video, guys, we're going to be showing you guys how to actually go and set up your first user, you know, change the default accounts, do all that kind of stuff, set up a domain. That's the next uh, topic of the video. And that's really some of the more interesting or technical stuff that we're going to do. Uh, that's followed by DNS, of course, because that's a part of Active Directory. And then we're going to need to do the DHCP part um, so that we can push down our DNS information to our clients. Um, and then we're going to start to show you guys more exotic stuff like Hyper-V, uh, like uh, Network Policy Server and Network Access Protection and Distributed File System uh, Replication, Distributed File System Namespaces. Uh, we're also going to touch on all sorts of different things. And you guys let me know what you guys want to see. Um, and I might put it in a different order kind of thing. So if you guys want to see something in particular, I might do it right away. Um, again, this is just a standard um, you know, loading screen that you'd see in Windows 8. Nothing really special going on. Um, because it's really that simple to install on the server. So yeah, it's detecting hardware devices, so it's actually detecting virtualized hardware devices. And this is just a, basically a waiting game. It's kind of like watching water boil. But it's pretty much done. Right? It's just detecting the hardware. It's going to go up. It's going to ask us to log on. It looks like it said restarting your PC, which it might do. It might restart a few times on you. Yeah, looks like it's restarting. Press any key to boot from CD or DVD. Uh, we're using an ISO image. So. And Hyper-V is smart enough to know that not to boot off the ISO image every time. And this little dot here is a Hyper-V thing. This little dot pointer. It's pretty awesome, isn't it? Kind of looks like a snowflake. Well, maybe I'm just really high. <laughs> just, when we get this Windows Server installed, we're going to show you guys how to set up a prawn server. And uh, no, I'm just kidding. We'll save that for my other channel. So here we have it. Now it's asking us, as I said, to create a password. So we're going to go ahead and give it a password. Um, just for the sake of this, I'm going to choose a generic password. Let's do uh, so it's going to say finalizing your settings, and then it's basically going to build your profile as it logs in, just like a normal computer would. First time you log onto an account, it builds the profile. Preparing your desktop, you might have seen that before. Yeah, it's pretty exciting. I can't really make uh, exciting green leprechauns pop out of nowhere. <laughs> well, I just did. Oops. Well, maybe some rainbows. Picture of Obama. Alrighty. So here we have the login. It's very similar to Windows 8. We're going to go like this because we can't actually press Alt Control Delete because it's going to think I'm doing it on my desktop that I'm recording this on. So we've got this button up here, Alt Control Delete to log on. Again, this is more Hyper-V stuff. We're going to log on. So this server is running on a RAID 1 array. So it's pretty, it's not it's going to be super fast, but it's, as you can see, it's probably a lot faster than most, most servers that we have to work with. Hey guys. All right. So that pretty much sums it up. Um, I had to wrap that one up kind of short because uh, something kind of cut out on that one. So um, yeah, that, these videos have been kind of tough to make, so I probably won't be making the third video for Active Directory until sometime late next week because I have my Microsoft exam coming up, and these have be totally taken up my entire weekend. I can't describe how much time these actually take me. Uh, more so these last couple videos. I'll still make sure I do my weekly videos next week. Uh, make sure you tune in next week for Saturday and Sunday. I'm going to be making videos as normal, but I will not be making any more server videos until late, late next week. Um, thank you very much. Let me know what you guys think about this. Uh, rate and subscribe, and I'll see you guys later.